Have some oats. Make sure you eat your oats. Or something else. Hello YouTube. My name is Adam Crone, or AC, as you may know me. Thank you for coming back to my channel to check out one of my videos. In this video, I'm doing, I got something stuck in my throat. <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to be showing you a little behind the scenes breakdown of how I made one of my original Masters of the Universe classics, custom character original designs. Have some oats. As some of you may know, uh, I love working within the Masters of the Universe universe because it's a great universe. It's not constrained by bookends or this is what this character is and all it can be. There's a lot of experimentation going on within that universe. The Star Wars universe is very similar, at least for me, and working within it. So a couple months ago I made a new wave of original characters that fit into the Masters of the Universe, the He-Man Universe. In this video, you're gonna see Old Fang. He's a character I created. He's a snake man. He's a good man. He's an old man. <laughs> what? Johnny Five, what's up? In a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of pull back, or maybe go in, and you're just gonna see my hands. Um, those figures, all, the whole wave, is off to their new owner, their commissions that I made. But the they they remain alive in my heart and in my presence through this video. So as I said, you're gonna see a little. I'm gonna give you a little taste of how I made these guys what went into them, specifically brainwave style, like, you know, brainwaves, laser beams. And so I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. You see that floaty bit? I don't know why it's doing that. I'm holding my camera, the thing's not going anywhere. That's so weird, it's ghosts. So today I'm looking at Old Fang. It's this guy, tall dude. Um, he's super tall. He's like another three inches taller than the rest of the folks. He was built from a rattler or your basic snake man. Uh, let lower body legs, which in this case I used um, King Hiss. So King Hiss has a separate top part and um, detaches from the human form to the snake form and they're interchangeable. So I made this guy like this so if my client wants to he can pop the top off and switch it out with any of the other He-Man figures that do that, that have that. Um, his feet were from Slush Head and I sculpted on the little scales there to match the scales on the leg that were already there. Get out of here. Hold on, let me turn this. Okay. Um, what else? Let's see. So you got your King Hiss. Actually, he's all King Hiss from the neck, from the base of the neck, down through the leg, slush head arm, uh, feet. He's got, he does have rattler hands, like I said. Um, and this is the King Hiss who, it was that variant that they made. Um, what else? His neck is also rattler. Now his head, and I'll show pictures in the, in the, uh, below here. So his head from, trusty pointer, his head from about, let me do this, make it do, there we go. All right, so his head from about right here, slicing downward, Maybe a little, a little more, right back here, slicing downward, going forward. So about right here, going forward, it was a Todd McFarlane figure. Um, this giant—I don't even know what it was. I think it was from Spawn. Um, that's what his face is. 
So I took it and I sculpted the back of the head to match, get the scales to match the front. And then I also sculpted the mohawk. Let me see that one handed. There we go. So the mohawk, I sculpted that. Ooh. Sculpted the there we go. Sculpted the mohawk, sculpted these mechanical breathers, sculpted the eye, sculpted the back of the head. Um, and he fits perfectly now on to the rattler neck. I sculpted the braces there. Okay. They go all the way around. Brace his neck. I sculpted his armor. Um, and then I used like a, so I sculpted the armor and got the shapes that I wanted. Then I used this kind of tool with that sort of spoon, back of the spoon, touched around it all over the place to give it sort of those divots. Um, that was, and then the shoulders, I did the same thing. A lot of glare, sorry about that. Uh, the neck piece, I did the same. I sculpted over the waist bit the same. And then I gave him those sculpted leg braces that go on the inside as well. Uh, I also sculpted the snake on his belt and his belt buckle that goes around like so. Okay. Um, what else? So as far as his armor, the hardest part, or not really hard, but I sculpted the body, the body bit first, and then once that was cured, did the fangs. Give him a little, little detail up in there. Um, I did that in one sitting, then I did the, the neck part in one sitting and the shoulders. And then I was able to do, since it detaches from the body, I was able to do the waist bit at the same time. Uh, the sculpting of the braces was bit by bit. So that was probably the longest, took the longest um, on the neck too. I had to do the the, bean, the braces around first and then the round parts and so on and so forth. Excuse me, so forth. Um, the head was able to detach, so I was able to do the side breathers and the eye in one sitting, and then I did the mohawk in a separate sitting. Um, of course, that was all after I did the joint prep of grinding down any discs, uh, hollowing out any his, his body where any uh, joints were gonna move. So now, let me, let me fix this. I'm not... um, yeah, so that he can retain his articulation and posability, but not worry about any paint chipping or scratching. Um, he also moves at the base of his neck there. So he's got that and the head. <clears throat> um, as far as his paints, the base paint obviously is this light green, the which I did, um, you know, in separate sittings. And since he again since he comes apart, made it easier and more efficient. I was able to be more efficient as far as I could paint the lower part, let it sit; paint the upper part, let it sit in one sitting, rather than waiting so I don't screw something up. Um, and I mixed all my colors. So I mixed the light green, I mixed the, yellow, the pale yellow, I mixed the dark green, all from testers and a little bit of those Vallejos that I showed you before. Um, but I had, again, I had to mix the Vallejos with some, some testers or seal it because they rub off. They don't cure very well, kind of cheap. Um, yeah, so that's how that guy was done. Now his weapon, is a mix, and he's got, this weapon has a flaw that I'm really frustrated about, but um, his weapon was a Horde Trooper's staff that I cut the ends off and I put your basic generic He-Man Master Universe axe blade on one end, and then this weird, I think this is like a missile from something on the other, kind of has a bone effect look to it. As far as the paint goes on the handle he's holding, uh, it's solid. It's a red plastic, that I roughed up with sandpaper and painted white. Um, the problem is that up here on this other white part, it's a little bit smoother. And so when you put it in his hand, it kind of chips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip that, rough it up some more, 
and then like a lot more and then repaint it white um, you guys can see it where it's chipped just a little bit I don't want that you want high quality going out to your, your clients um, uh, what else that's about it uh, with his jaw and his mouth you can see there's no, I didn't do any joint prep on that, but there's really no being held in place by this peg. So there's no like, not a lot of rubbing anywhere um, that I'm worried about. Um, what else? I think that's about it. So that's Old Fang. Let me see if I can get him into a battle pose for you. Pow. Because he's so long and lanky, uh, sometimes. Come on, man. Yeah, Boom. Yeah, dude. It's pretty rough. Pretty tough, rough and tough, dude. Yeah. Old Fang on top and bottom. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was a little look at Old Fang, an original character that I created from my brain to fit into the Masters of the Universe universe world. He-Man world. So if you like that, you like looking behind the scenes, behind the curtain, getting a little peek back there at how I do what I do, uh, be sure to check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash actoydesign, all right? Uh, over there I've posted the full tutorial for this guy and the rest, showing you a breakdown of every stage in the process of how I made it, and work in progress pictures and all that stuff, painting apps, everything. That's all on the Patreon. Also, if you like, if you have more clicks left in your fingers, be sure to like, subscribe, and bell icon. And as always, I will see you in the future. Future. The future is this. This. This way. Yeah.